We didn't know we were getting a joke Brexit. Uh, we should have done, of course. I'm Mike Cashman, uh, and right at the start of my book, Britannia Waves the Rules, which is actually a compilation of Brexit's a trick, not a treat, Brexit's a musical trick, and I don't beg pardon, I'm talking bollocks from the Rose Garden. But right at the beginning, we have Brexitian fantasy, a rip-off of Bohemian Rhapsody. Is this the real thing? Is this just fantasy? Um, ending up with nothing really matters except sovereignty. Um, but <laughs> later, yeah, later on in this, it, it's um, in general, these are parody songs. Um, so in general, it's not visual humour in the book. But uh, I did put this one in um, as a motorway sign I mocked up. Uh, you lost. Get over it. We won. We don't know what to do about it. Because do you remember, and it's about two years ago now, um, but it characterises the whole affair. There were loads and loads of adverts of get ready for Brexit. You must get ready for Brexit. Um, but those people who attempted to find out what it was they had to do to get ready for Brexit and consult the appropriate uh, government department found that there was nothing, <laughs> no information that could be given to them. Sorry, we can't tell you. We don't know what's happening. Get ready for Brexit. Uh, the signs continued. So that was um, well, pretty painful, but um, uh, I suppose pretty funny. Um, somebody commented on um, uh, the Brexit musical, actually, uh, having listened to it all, commented on it as painfully funny. Um, I said, yeah, you can you can put that as a review. Um, <laughs> so what was going on at that time was there was a cunning plan from the Tories. This is two years ago. We're seeing all the uh, the anniversaries of it now uh, because they had this cunning plan whereby even though the legislation that had been brought in that required the government to seek an extension if they didn't have uh, um, a withdrawal agreement uh, with the EU, uh, but the Tories said, no, no, we will leave on 31st of October. Um, but you've got a law saying that you can't if you haven't got an agreement. We will not break the law. Well, how are you going to do that? Uh -huh. Not telling you. Uh, so they <laughs> supposedly had this amazingly cunning plan. And when it came down to it, this amazingly cunning plan turned out to be uh, sending the letter that they were required to send by the legislation, but not signing it. Uh, and then sending another letter saying, this is what we really want to do. And that was signed. So <laughs> it's a fairly old and hackneyed trick. You know, the cheque is in the post. Oh, we, did we forget to sign it? Oh, dear, please send it back to us, um, buying a few more days. So the unsigned letter. The European Union, of course, um, took note of Article 50, which says um, that what you do is, um, or the actions that you take, if they are according to your constitutional arrangements, then the EU will take notice of them. So, of course, they took notice of the unsigned letter, which had been sent in accordance with constitutional arrangements uh, and agreed the extension. Um, but uh, we have so many joke fantasy Brexit indications. Adler Hanlon, actually, um, who some of you know from Father Ted or from stand-up comedy, uh, did a little piece of video, as I recall, where he said, you you know, Britain, if you want a fantasy Brexit, who are we to stand in the way? Lord knows Ireland has so much fantasy history. So you have your fantasy Brexit, but please leave us out of it. Uh, don't involve us in it, which, um, of course, uh, that plea wasn't fulfilled um, because we have Boris Johnson. Um, we're going to have checks, no checks, checks, no checks. Uh, uh, we, we, you know, whatever you want. I'll tell you there are no checks. Uh, I'll sign something and say there are checks. Did I sign that? Oh, I didn't know that uh, uh, that I'd signed us up for that. Um, it, it, the government signed up for all sorts of problems, which, oh, we never knew about those. Uh, well, I did send you a letter, a uh, um, longer version of the letter that I had in The Guardian in 19th of December 2019. I did send you a letter uh, in which uh, I identified uh, quite a number of problems and Department for Exiting the European Union wrote back to me the end of January um, 2020, just before turning the lights off, uh, to say, yes, yes, we understand all these problems. Uh, we'll um, arrange to have wide ranging consultation and put in a careful implementation programme. Uh, no, no, we didn't. <laughs> Fooled you. Um, you know, so we've got David Frost saying, 
Um, oh, I never saw any of these warnings of problems. It's behind you, David. <laughs> it's behind you. So the government continues upon its merry way uh, without having made preparations. Uh, who Their response to anything that they're required to do is to kick the can down the road and say, give us more time. <laughs> and I, I even saw, um, I think it was James Heapy, uh, bless him, <laughs> arguing that this was the British government's um, considered and mature response um, to give British business more time to prepare for the checks. Um, uh, except the the the, the, uh, the joke there is that actually British business is having all the issues exporting um, because the European Union, bearing in mind that Brexit was coming, um, did the sensible thing and prepared. Um, and uh, the businesses that the British government is favouring by not applying any customs checks uh, and by the way, missing out, it seems, on about three billion of revenue per year. Um, the businesses that the British government is favouring are, are the businesses on the in the EU that are um, exporting to to Britain. So um, take back control has resulted in uh, a massive relinquishing of control by Britain. Um, so arguably, that's if you can laugh at it laugh rather than cry. Quite a joke. Boris Johnson's credibility is really, if you look at what he's achieved, so low um, that I do sometimes wonder whether the best approach, uh, the best response to Johnson might be if people laughed at him more. Uh, you know, the um, uh, if he's faced with black and white evidence that what he said is wrong, that uh, that he's lied, then he just ignores it and um, uh, you know bounces back with some attack on the other party, uh, and so that doesn't get very far. But I just wonder whether um, it mightn't be better if, uh, whenever he says anything, that the the response and you know this is why I've um, I've produced some of this stuff um, because. Really, what he does is very funny. Um, the, you know, I, I've I've said before, if you have a government that fulfills all its obligations, that does what it ought to, uh, prepares appropriately and carefully, uh, undertakes due diligence, uh, checks that companies that uh, propose to have ferry contracts should actually have control of some ferries. Uh, if you have a government that basically does its duty. There's nothing funny in that. Um, the reason why there's been a lot to laugh about over the last five years is sadly because of the incompetence of the government. But I've sought to record it and the British Library have requested deposit copies um, of uh, of all of the books. Well, they have them of the, the separate paperbacks. This is the combined one, which I will have to deposit there as well. Uh, so here's my attempt to help you to laugh at Boris Johnson and the incompetence of the Tories and the mess that they've taken in, us into because the more of us that laugh about this and, you know, give this stuff to your friends so that they can laugh at them too, um, the lower his credibility goes. That's my bit. Feel free to add your comments on the video. Uh, do subscribe to the channel and do support the channel by buying the stuff. You can get see, you can hear samples of the music on the website, viewdelta.com, if you want to hear what some of the songs sound. They're sung very, very well. All right, thank you.